Our next uh, speaker is Mauricio Herrera. He will be uh, giving an interesting case presentation, a uh, pathology case. Uh, so I'll hand it over to Mauricio. All right, thank you, Ross. You were able to say that name the Latino way. Good job. Um, yes, um, first I have to say thank you to all of you, uh, all our peers and staff member, team members, um, taking the time to be with us. And um, let me do a small introduction of myself. My name is Mauricio Herrera, um, also an oral surgeon. I recently join um, Virginia Oral and Facial. I feel proud of that. Um, I'm surrounded by a very good, excellent team and good, caring, knowledgeable doctors. So I'm happy to be here, happy to help uh, also to the community. And um, today, today I'm gonna be talking about uh, a case presentation of oral pathology, very common that probably you will see it at least or diagnose it at least once in your life because um, it's pretty common. Um, and let me, let me just start. All right. I will not be taking much time off here. It's kind of a short presentation, but I'll leave you a few seconds to read this quote. So I believe in this quote. Um, sometimes we got stuck in yesterday and yesterday ended last night either for failure or success. Um, so we always need to look forward, not, not get stuck in there. And also we sometimes worry too much about tomorrow and Tomorrow, I know it will bring some happy moments, some not happy moments, but it's not there yet. So I encourage you to live today, do our best today, try to do a masterpiece from today. So um, I know tomorrow, especially at these moments, it's a little uncertain, but life has given us the opportunity now to have more time at home with family, with your loved ones, partners, to do stuff that we usually don't do um, because we are doing what we love. Um, also hoping that we, we return to do our jobs um, soon, but um, as of now, let's, let's stay home and, and do our part. All right. Um, so let me start with the pathology case. Um, she was referred to our office a year ago a little bit over, yeah, a little less than a year ago, a 25-year-old uh, female, um, healthy patient. Um, she was referred because the dentist saw a lesion in her right lower body of the mandible and uh, um, patient is completely asymptomatic Clinically, she didn't show anything pertinent to it, um, no infection, no swelling, mild bulging on that buccal area, um, but no pain, no paresthesia. Um, then she showed, uh, then I saw the, the, this panoramic x-ray um, dated on March of 2018. So she didn't do a thing for more over a year because I saw her in May of 19. And uh, you can see a radial opacity between the roots of 27 and 28 and already starting to displace them. Doesn't look that they're resorbed. You can see a small radial loosened lining. So right now uh, there was no paresthesia as well. So right now we're going to put a little poll there to see our differential diagnosis, um, to see what, what you think it, it is.
give it a few seconds here, Mauricio. Yes, yes. Votes are still coming in. Good, yeah, let's give some minutes, some seconds. Thank you, Ross. All right, I can see that you are all wrong. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Most of you are good. Yes, it is an odontoma. Um, let's, I, told, I told my patient that this is a very, it's the most, not very common, but it's the most common B9 odontogenic related tumor and that we needed a little bit of further imaging studies um, to plan our uh, future procedure well. So that day we took a phone beam CT at the office and different um, cuts so we can see exactly what we're going to do or plan for, for our future surgery. Here's an actual cut, it started to expand a little bit um, the buccal cortex, not the lingual cortex. Usually, and I'll explain odontoma, uh, the pathophysiology a little bit in, in later on, but um, usually these, these type of pathology do not grow much and doesn't expand much, but this one was particu particularly um, big. Here is a coronal view. You can see little tiny teeth inside the tumor. Uh, okay, this is a, a sagittal view. And here is the 3D. We want to see if there, to check if there is no resorption of the root surrounding that tumor or neighboring teeth. We also in a cone beam will evaluate how close it is to the inferior alveolar um, canal. There it is, quite, quite close in this case um, to the mental foramen. So we had to explain our patients possible um, complications about doing this, like probably uh, some paresthesia, dysesthesia, and, and uh, making her aware that it's a possibility by removing this um, tumor. Um, here is another radiographic um, view of it. Now, um, gonna, uh, there are three types of odontomas. Um, they are diagnosed only by radiograph. And uh, we're gonna do, do we have a poll for this one, Ross? Um, there you go, to what type of odontoma this is. Let's give some seconds. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yes, this is a compound odontoma. We'll talk about it later. In reality, in terms of the treatment, it doesn't change much. It doesn't matter if it's complex or compound, compound, six cystic. Um, we, we, we will need to remove it. And that's what we explained to her. So here are the intro pictures. Here you can see a little bit of the bulge in here. This tooth was, she stated that she, it shifted a bit. So um, we did some uh, local anesthesia, of course. And when we plan this procedure, I plan it by doing an incision at the level of the muco um, gingival line. And the reason is um, so we can have access more caudal or 
towards the border of the lower jaw and also taking care of not touching the mental foramen uh, or the mental nerve, I'm sorry, um, that it will be closed. So, so that's something that we need to pay attention to. And this is what, what we found. I started, I don't have that picture, previous picture, but uh, I started with a round burr um, to start, create access to the lesion. At the beginning, I could feel uh, like a hard mass, but then you started, you start to feel that, all those little teeth in there. And here are some other views of all those teeth. And then we, we started to extract each of them. Um, here it looks all ready clean, but the tooth that was very close to the mental, to the inferior alveolar canal, when I remove it, it started to, to bleed a bit. So what we did is we, we, we control the bleeding. You control that first, of course, and then, and then we proceed to remove uh, each tooth. We, I don't have that picture either, but we, we took at the end uh, PA um, there. So, so we were sure that all those little teeth were removed. Mm. Right, that's the cavity in there it was fairly big. Uh, we were able to see some of those roots of 27 and 28 exposed, so they were not covered by bone. Uh, defect large like this, um, we will need to consider to bone graft it uh, for helping. First, it's big void there and to help these teeth also um, to heal well. Uh, we rounded all these all this um, sharpness not leaving there like that. Um, then let me, let me also we need to consider um, to check on vitality of these teeth after. Right, this is, this is the cavity, how it looked. And then different morphologies of all those little teeth. There we go. All right, and, and then we decided to bone graft it. It's cortical cancellous bone. We sent part of something I didn't mention uh, is that we sent the lining uh, of of the lesion, we put it in a pathology jar. I have the pathology report there. Um, very important to send it since uh, we already knew that it was a odontoma by just looking at the radiograph, but it's important to have it documented. And also you, you can be surprised and it's better to, to really know, be 100% sure what it is. So we bone grafted this, we use some PRP2, and, and then we put a, a collagen membrane on top of this, uh, resorbable, and then we stitch it up. A patient, I saw her a week later, she says she didn't have much discomfort, no pain a week later. She said that the first two days she had slight paresthesia on that side of the lip. But, but when I saw her a week after, she, she was fine. All right, here I, I'm gonna send you a Cheesecake Factory uh, gift card for the first person who gets how many teeth they were. So probably in the, um, Paul, you can, or in the questions and answers you can put there, or the chats you can put there. A lot of gift cards there, Mauricio. I'm sorry? So that's a lot of gift cards right there. <laughs> oh, the first one. They all came in at once. <laughs> then put it on the, on the chat. <laughs> okay. 
if they can. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, all right. Let me show you in the next slide how many we have. You were. I'm not able to go to the next slide. Let me see. Oh, there it is. All right, here they are. So there were 16 of them that were removed. And yeah, so it was quite, quite big, quite big. Usually there are just a few, not this many. Here is the pathology report that we got. And then uh, um, we scheduled her to see her six months later. Uh, I can't remember what happened, but she showed this year at the beginning of this year. So this is a nine months post-op. Something I forgot to mention is that on the third month, we made her go, we, we did a consult with the endodontist to make sure those teeth were vital and they were so. Um, no need for root canals, so the bone helped. And then she decided to go for ortho work. And now the orthodontists have uh, the space, uh, the, I'm sorry, the bone available to, to move those teeth. And then we also took a scan. So bone looks pretty good there, I think. And, uh, and that's, that's the case. So let's talk a little bit about odontoma. It's a B9 odontogenic tumor. Um, they do not metastasize. It's classified as an amartoma. Amartomas are, um, they, 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 are they don't grow much. They, they have memory of not expanding much. And that's what, what the difference is with a true neoplasm. Um, like for example, an amyloblastoma, an amyloblastoma, even though it's benign, it, it, it can expand more and then it can become sometimes life-threatening because it can start to press vital structures like airways. So a, a odontoma that is an amartoma, um, never does that. Um, they develop from epithelial and mesenchymal um, components of the dental apparatus. Um, that's where they come from. Um, the ages, it can range, range in any age, but the most common is in the first and second decades. It's a little bit more in females, and also it's more in the upper jaw. I have seen them both so, um, um, so but a little bit more in the maxilla. Um, as we said, the classification, it could be three types, compound, um, little small tooth-like structures, complex is just unorganized and it's a mass of enamel, dentin and cementum and cystic, I have never seen a cystic before. I have seen a mix of compound and complex. Um, you see more the complex ones in the posterior maxilla. The, the compounds you see it more in the interior. This is just based uh, this classification by radiographs. Um, if they are um, creating a functional problem, not letting other permanent teeth to erupt then we, we, we must remove them. Um, this is how they develop. Sometimes it's associated with trauma during the primary dentition or a primary tooth got infected and, and then it starts to create this. There are some, some syndromes like Gardner syndrome that you will see multiple um, autotomas in the jaw that you need to control them. Usually they're kids 
and you need to bring them to the operating room, start removing them, then they grow back and so on. Um, let's see, differential diagnosis, there are several, that's why it's good to biopsy them. Uh, basically all radio opacities, um, very important to know the result because each one of these entities um, have different type of procedures, I'm um, sorry, of treatments once, once you receive the PATH report. Treatment, um, as I mentioned, it's surgical removing of, of removal of them. If they're quite large, you can bone graft them right there. If you're sure it's an odontoma, when you have seen a lot of them, you are uh, sure what it is, so you bone graft it. Uh, there are some cases that they are in a position that is not creating any harm, so no need to be removed. You just tell the patient and inform them um, that we'll, we'll just keep an eye on it. And I think that's all. I leave you with this. If you are always at the head of the class, then you're in the wrong class. What I'm trying to say is that we need to try to have a personal growth every day. Um, and not only in our profession, um, but also in, in all aspects of life, health, faith, um, job, peers, relationship. Um, let's, let's try to challenge our limits, do not limit, do, do not limit our challenges. And I want you, I encourage you to be positive at this time. And I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, Mauricio, uh, thank you for that. That was a, that was a cool case. Uh, there are a few questions here in the queue. The first question, is it absolutely necessary to remove all parts of the lesion, even when in close proximity to the mental nerve? That's a great question. Um, if, if you don't, I feel that yes, it needs to be removed, but if you don't feel comfortable, if you see it close, you can, you can leave it and then you inform the patient and observe. Um, but, but in our experience, I would advise everything to be removed. Uh, next question, what precautions did you take to protect the nerve? Did you give her steroids? I actually did, yes. I prescribed after. Um, I did during the IV, I, I put some dexamethasone and then I prescribed a medrol pack for after it. During the procedure, yes, we were careful of trying of not touching the nerve. Next question, had this patient not had previous x-rays via bite wings or previous panrex that would have showed evidence of this or did this develop that rapidly? No, this, that's a, also a great question. Um, that panoramic x-ray I showed you at the beginning, that was 2018. She said that she, she was coming from Mexico so she couldn't remember if they took a picture um, when she was back then, um, but of because of the size of this odontoma, I would have guessed that at least it's been there for over 10 years because they grow slow. Um, so it's not, it's not a rapid evolution for it to grow. Right. So it's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, last question, would you not treat until you get the diagnosis? Um, also, good question. Um, since we are pretty confident of what it was based on clinical and radiographic uh, evidence, I, I, we just treat, I have, treat and do like an excision or removing the hole. It's, it's preferable in this case, so we don't put again our patient to a second um, surgery, but 
there are some pathologies that yes, first you do an, an incisional biopsy, you send it when you're not sure, and then, then you go ahead and plan for the definite treatment. 